Welcome to Not So Classy with Esna. I am here as the singer Esna once again because it's our 30th episode. Yay! I was kind of debating what I should talk about. I thought, why don't I talk about all the bad luck that I've had with cars? So I will take you guys back to the first accident that I can ever remember. This was, I think, in about middle school. And I was wearing a Korean traditional dress. I still remember it. It was pink. And my mom was driving and we were on our way to, I believe, a recital, a piano recital. And we were on our way and it was our light and we were going uh, straight. But a car ran their red light and hit us. At a T, so it hit my mom's side of the car, and it made me jerk and hit my head on the window, and the seatbelt yanked because my whole body like jerked up, and it was a really really bad accident. Like all the airbags uh, exploded, and we all kind of had really serious injuries, and that was the first accident that I ever remember being in. And I remember I had like cuts right where the seatbelt was because that's how strong it yanked me. And when I hit my head on the window, I hit right where my temple was. So it bulged out maybe about like an inch and a half and it was blue and purple and it was really painful. So I couldn't lay to my right side to go to sleep. The second accident that I remember a big one in the car was now in college, I was with my friend in a gas station and we were pulling out of the car, trying to make a right out of the gas station. And we were basically almost done making that right. But some fucker (laughs) ran a light again and then just zoomed and hit us from the back. And so again, the airbag exploded. And I, this time I jerked forward. So then I collided with the airbag as it was exploding. So it hit my face directly in the front. And I just remember like, because it was, it was so cold. Like it felt like my face was burning and it was cold at the same time. And I couldn't feel anything. So I wasn't sure if my face was bleeding, like if, cause it hit my nose. So I wasn't sure if I was bleeding or not. And so I was just like, Oh my God, what the fuck just happened? And I asked my friend, I was like, am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? And he's like, no, 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 you're okay. But you're just a little bruised, but you're okay. And like, that was so scary because imagine just having that airbag explode in your face. That's a lot of force. And, uh, I remember we went straight to church, man, that was another traumatic car experience. And this is all happening when I'm not driving. You know what I mean? I'm just in the passenger seat and it's not our fault either. So I always have this idea that it doesn't matter how good of a driver you are because there are other idiots out there who are horrible and they're the ones that cause the accidents. Um, so those are the two big accidents that I remember from my childhood. Uh, I also have a problem with cars running over my feet, (laughs) like accidents that happen when I'm not even in the car. So the first time that I ever experienced a car running over my foot was there's a place called HK Market in Koreatown. It's on Western and like First Street or something like that. And mom was inside doing the grocery shopping and I was in the car with my dad and my brother at the time. Uh, But my mom was taking it a little long and I think I wanted something. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go and meet mom in the store. So I was running and then a car is coming from my right side, but I was already going. And so the car should have stopped, but I saw and I freaked out. So I stopped and the car stopped and the tire was on my foot and I was wearing white stockings then. And 
I thought I was going to get in trouble. And so I was just like, move back, move back. Like telling the driver, like, move back. You're on my foot. You're on my foot. Like my mom's coming out, like move back. And the guy was like, what? I'm like, you're on my fucking foot. Like, you know, I didn't curse back then because I didn't know what that was. But I was like, move back, move back. And like he rolled off my foot. That was my right foot then. And there were like clear tire marks because I was wearing white stockings back then. And this was in elementary school, I think. And so my mom comes out and she's like, what the heck just happened? And I remember we went to court then and like she brought the stockings as evidence that this car like ran over her child's foot. And I don't remember what the settlement was or anything like that back then. But that happened once when I was really young. And about five years ago, I believe six years ago, maybe this was when one of our friends was in town with his whole family. So we went to Lotte World, which is like, like a very small scaled Disneyland of Korea. And uh, we were all on our way out and the oldest son, my friend's oldest son, wanted to go and meet his friends. And he doesn't speak any Korean. So I went with him to the cab to tell the taxi driver, put in this address. So he got in the car and the door was still open. And I like leaned in, I had my left foot out and I leaned in and I was telling him the address. And so he put in the address and then it kind of happened slow motion in my head, but it was happening. And like, I was like, no, this, no, it's not happening again. <laughs> and before I realized it, the back tire of the taxi was on my foot, on my left foot. Like he, I didn't even close the door. My body was still half in. I was like, what, what is he doing? Cause I saw him shift gears. Right. And I was like, well, I guess his foot is on the brake then. Cause I didn't even close the door. Like he wouldn't start like that was going in my head. And then he was like the tire was on my foot already. And so I'm like, um, you need to like move because you're on my foot, you know? And he was like, Oh, what, what? And then, so he rolled back off my foot. And so I think that made it worse because if he just went, then it would just like the weight of the car or weight of the tire would have just kind of rolled off, but he stood on my foot and then he rolled back onto it. And so the, the left part of my foot was completely crushed kind of, right? But I, my friend had to go to a schedule and I didn't want to make him late. So I was like, just, just, uh, I'll get your, like, I'll take a snapshot of your driver's license plates and whatever. And I'll, I, I gotta go, I gotta go. Um, my friend was so angry for me that he was like, get out of the car to his son because you're not riding this cab. And he like slammed the door and was like, just get out of here. So we got him into another cab and he left. And, you know, it was the first time that I ever got into any kind of accident in Korea. So I was like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Like I have this guy's car plates, but I don't even know his, the driver's number. So then like I called, I looked up the taxi service, whatever. And then I was like, I need to find this guy's number because he ran over my foot with his taxi cab. And yeah. And then I remember thinking, it's not hurting, like, but I think it was just all that adrenaline that made it, it feel like it wasn't hurting, but it was actually really in pain. And I didn't know that in Korea, the more that you go to the hospital and the more you can prove that there's actually something wrong, you get paid more. But if you do keep going to the hospital, the settlement fee goes that much lower because they kind of deduct from what you would have normally gotten. And so I kept going because it kept hurting and there were these phantom pains. And like, if I stood on it too long or if I'm just laying down sometimes, it would just hurt. And till this day, it'll just randomly hurt. And that's something that I don't think I can ever fix because we've done x-rays, we did an MRI and they're like, there's nothing wrong. It's just, it's just pain you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. And so that was the, the second time that my feet got run over by a cab. <laughs> and this most recent one was the biggest one where I actually got hit by a car as I was walking on the crosswalk. This is already almost two years ago because it happened in March of 2019. 
uh, I was going to the Korean DMV to change my American driver's license to the Korean one so that I can drive in Korea. And what they were telling me was that I need to go to the immigration office and get some paperwork and then you can bring it back and we can switch it for you. And there was an immigration office or there still is an immigration office inside COEX, which is not that far of a walk from where the Korean DMV is. And the Korean DMV is right next to the Gangnam police station. And so I came out of the DMV and I was walking on the street and it was time for me to cross. And this, this crossing was a blinking yellow light, which means cars need to slow down and watch out for pedestrians because we have the right of way. It's a two-way street, one car going that way and one car coming this way. And it's just a two-way street. I looked and there were no cars coming and I had enough time because the street was actually pretty narrow. It, it's not very wide of a street. And so I'm in front of the Gangnam police station and I'm crossing the street. I'm almost done crossing the street. And that's when a car hits me and he hits my right hip and I black out. Like, I don't remember this moment, but from what I hear, I got hit and I flew up in the air a little bit. I landed on my left shoulder and then I hit my head on the concrete and I rolled over onto my face. And so I broke my collarbone. Obviously I had a concussion, uh, but thankfully the silver lining of it all was that it happened in front of a police station. So he couldn't run away. And right across the bigger street was the fire station. And right across the bridge was the big college hospital, Konguk University Hospital. So as soon as the accident happened, for me to get to the hospital, it happened within about 35 minutes. So it was pretty quick. But the next thing I remember is me just waking up in the emergency room on the hospital bed in excruciating pain. And I'm just like, oh, like, like it hurts so much on my left like shoulder. Like what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm, I'm like crying because... I don't remember and I'm just in so much pain. The nurse is like, you need to call someone. I'll give you your phone. You should call someone. And I called Angelina at the time through Kakao Talk. But you know, sometimes when you're crying, it sounds like you're laughing. She thought I was telling a joke or like I was laughing and I was just joking that I got like hit by a car and she was like what like what are you talking about and like <laughs> like I got I'm in so much pain like that so she thought I was laughing and the nurse takes the phone and was like your friend just got hit by a car and she's in the emergency room this is where we're at you need to come here so your friend has someone that she can talk to thankfully she wasn't that far away and she was with our friend Will and uh Apparently at the time they were saying only one person can come into the emergency room to say hi because it's such a hectic place. So I black out again. And then the next point I remember is Angelina actually being there. And she's like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, you know, where are you hurting? And I'm just like, I don't know. I got hit by a car. <laughs> like I'm just in pain. And she's like, well, I think your uncle is here and they only allow one person in the emergency room. So I'm going to go wait outside. And I was like, my uncle? <laughs> I didn't call him. And so what happened was uh, because I was trying to change my driver's license, I had taken my passport with me too and all of my IDs. And so I guess when the hospital staff was looking through my things, they saw my ID stuff and they searched it and they found my emergency contact that you actually put when you first register for any of these like legal documents. And it was my aunt. I had put my aunt's number, but they called my aunt and my aunt was watching my nephew. So she couldn't come. So she told my uncle to come. And so I was like, so random, but I guess those emergency contacts are actually really important because in times like this, you know, they actually reach out to those emergency contacts. He came, my uncle and I are not very close. So I felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> I was kind of, it was kind of awkward. Um, but I was waiting for my turn to go get the x-rays and for them to tell me, you know, you actually broke your collarbone. So you're going to have to be in this brace. They were saying, I don't need surgery. It was, it luckily, it wasn't that bad of an injury that I needed surgery. So you don't have to be admitted, but you should be admitted 
but just not at this hospital. Angelina and Will had left because they were like, there's nothing we can actually do. We can't even come see you. So maybe we'll come visit you when you get home, but we're going to leave the hospital for now. And Will was the one that actually got all of the information from the person who actually hit me because he was waiting in the emergency room. Um, so then they all left. I guess as soon as Angelina found out that I got hit by a car and I was hospitalized, she like kind of reached out to people that were actually close to me. She had called my friend Kelly. And so when I got out of the hospital, Kelly met me and Kelly came over to my house to help me just kind of like calm down. But again, for me, I'm like, it was a huge accident, but I was like, I can't believe I just got hit by a car. It was painful, but it was just so hilarious to me that why, why does all this stuff happen to me with cars? And I'm not even doing anything wrong. <laughs> and so Amy was nice enough to be like, I'll come and pick up Yoda and watch Yoda while you have to recuperate because I can't do anything. Like it really was just so painful and I, you can't move. You know, the doctors were like, in case your bone doesn't stick back together straight, then we're going to have to actually break it and go through surgery and reattach your bone. So it's really important that you just stay still until your bone reattaches itself. I did have to be hospitalized. I remember the first hospital that my aunt had found that was close to her house because she was like, if I have to come back and forth, I want it to be closer to my house. But she lives much further away from like central Seoul. So the area is, is also not as metropolitan. And we checked it out and I was like, I am not staying here. Like it was such a ratchet hospital. <laughs> I was like, nah, 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 I'm not staying here. And so then I did a little bit more research, asked some other of uh, like trainers that I know, and they found another one that was actually in central Seoul in like Hakdong area. We checked it out, much better facility. <laughs> there was an elevator. And, <laughs> and so I got admitted and I had the hardest time being admitted because you literally have nothing to do. I'm just like, can I just be quote unquote admitted and just come back and forth from the house. And they're like, no, 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 this all has to be in the, in the books. And so we know that it's difficult, but you have to stay. And there's a curfew. No one can come visit you after 9 PM. And I'm like, I'm such a night owl. Um, and thankfully a lot of people visited me during the day, but you know, if you're 24 hours in the hospital, there's not, you're doing absolutely nothing. And even if a person comes for like an hour or, or two, that's an hour or two out of 24 hours that you're just locked in the hospital room. And so that was really, really hard. And I stayed there for about six days. And I think on the seventh day I left the hospital. I have never, ever taken sleeping pills. Even though I have really bad insomnia, I just kind of deal with it, but I've never taken it. I feel like I would get addicted to it because if I know that it works once, then I'll just take it all the time. So I had never taken it before, but at the hospital, because I was in a shared room and everyone like snores and you hear the outside car noises because you're I was right next to the window. I literally just could not sleep and I'm just in so much pain. And so I was like, you got to give me pills. <laughs> You gotta give me sleeping pills. And so at first they gave me like a low dosage. And by the third day, I was like, give me everything you got because I'm still waking up. I can't sleep. I'm not resting. Me being at the hospital is not resting. And I know that that's not good for me. Like I'm supposed to be at the hospital so I can rest, but I'm not resting. I'm not well rested. And if anything, I'm just more stressed out. So I toughed it out for six days, but I was like, I, I just really can't. I can't keep taking the sleeping pills because I don't feel right taking them. So I finally checked out and I stayed at home for like a good two, three months. And so even when I was in the hospital, because I can't wash my own hair, body, I really just couldn't do anything about it. Like if anything, I had to use water naps to like, you know, just get like my underarms or like certain areas, but I couldn't take a bath because I couldn't undo my brace and my hair. I'm just like, I, I can't wash it. I can't even bend over to wash it because all the weight from the gravity, if I were to bend over, it would fuck up my shoulder. And so I remember I left every two days to go to my hair and makeup shop and they just washed my hair for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was horrible. But what was nice is that at the hospital while I was staying, they serve you three meals a day and it's like really nice Korean meals. Um, and I was like, wow, I, I guess I'm pretty lucky that, you know, I'm at a hospital where they actually feed you like really good food. Cause I don't know about other hospitals, like in America and stuff. I don't know what kind of food they feed you, but I was like, whoa, this is like, you know, <laughs> like, like this is actually like a really good meal. Uh, yeah. So after that, I was in the house only to come out to go to the hospital to get checked and to get the, the procedures done. Um, but there was nothing else that I could really do. And I would take x-rays, check the MRI. We did the CT scan and they were saying, everything is looking good. Everything is slowly starting to come back together. It's, it's, it's fine. But I would still be in so much pain. And after about four or five months, four months, after about four months, uh, they said the bone is pretty much attached together, just kind of weak. So you have to be careful, but you can take your brace off from time to time. But when you're sleeping, keep it on. And so I had to do that for about a month. And then they were like, the bone is good. You just have to take it off and you have to start doing physical therapy. But the problem that I had with that was that I had no money to do physical therapy and the insurance wouldn't cover it. And so I missed the window that was most important for you to get the physical therapy done. So the healing process for my shoulder has lasted even longer than it should. And I should actually still be doing physical therapy, but it's actually really expensive and it's not really covered by insurance. So I'm trying to do things on my own. And so even when you see my workout videos, sometimes that I upload on, on Insta stories, most of the time, or actually a hundred percent of the time for about a year, I was only working out my core and my bottom half of the body. Cause I really just couldn't do anything with my arms. And I didn't even think about it, but I remember I, my right side of my hip was hurting so much. And I was like, why is it hurting here so much? And I remember I was changing in the hospital and I looked down and like, I had the biggest blood bruise literally half of my thigh all the way up to my hip. And I was like, oh yeah, that's where the fucking car hit me. Completely forgot about that because this, my shoulder, broken collarbone shoulder pain was so much more excruciating. And so then after that, I was like, uh, I also need to get treated on my hip because this is pretty bad. Um, and so we did an x-ray and I think we did an MRI at one point, but they're like, thankfully, you don't have any broken bones here or anything, but we don't know why you have the pain. It's literally just huyutjung. That's what they call it in Korean, but it's just these phantom pains or real pain, but it's just pain just caused by an accident that lasts. And there's nothing that a scan or an MRI or anything will show that is wrong. It's just because of the impact from the accident. And so Till this day, I have to sleep with a very plush cushion underneath my right side of my hip like this. And if I want to sleep on my left side, I have to like perfectly position myself so that it's not painful. And then once it starts hurting, I have to shift. And so because this fucker got me on both sides of my body, my right hip and my left shoulder, I'm just uncomfortable all the time. Like if it was all on my left side, at least I could like shift over to my right and like lay down on my right side and be fine. But it's literally from both sides. It's been almost two years and I still have a lot of pain in my shoulder. I just started working out a little bit with my shoulder because I figured that it's gotten better because I can actually rotate my arm and the pain is not as bad. Like I can still feel discomfort and like a little bit of sharp pain when I do it. But before I literally would just stop a little bit above my head and I wouldn't be able to turn it around. Uh, so I started working it out a little bit this month, starting January, but I'm taking it slow and uh, hopefully I can get back to being able to do push-ups and pull-ups like I used to do before the accident. Um, so yeah, I'm dealing with that. But those are the three times that I actually got into an accident when I was outside 
of the car, me being hit by a car being the biggest one. These are the stories that I have of me actually being involved in a car accident that was really big. Me inside a car, getting into a car accident, the last time was when I was in college, like back in 2000 and I don't know, six? Yeah, oh my God, that ages me so much. (laughs) 2006. And then everything happened with me outside of the car. But the most recent car accident that I got into when I was in the car was a little fender bender, but it was still very like, holy shit, like I haven't gotten into a car accident like this in such a long time, was when um, my dear friend Angelina was driving. (laughs) We were on our way to Costco and we were right before Songsu Bridge. And we were getting ready to cross the bridge and she wanted to change lanes. And I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of her driving, honestly. And she's not the greatest driver. So anytime I am in the car, I I do get pretty nervous. (laughs) Uh, And she knows this. Uh, But she was switching lanes. And like, I guess in her mind, she said that she looked, there was space And there was a car behind, but she assumed that he was going to let her go. And in Korea, you never assume someone's going to let you go in front of them. And so she started going and we just collided. And I was, we jerked and I was like, what the fuck? I I was like, I can't believe we just got a car accident. And uh, the funny thing was right before that happened, as we were pulling out of an alleyway, she almost hit a motorcycle driver. And I was like, oh, you're going to take it. I'm like, the feeling that I have right now is, ah, this is not good feeling. And then like a minute later, we actually get into a car accident. And so we had to pull off to the side and she had no idea what to do. And I was like, do you not know your insurance carrier's number? She's like, no, I got to call my manager. And I was like, woman. And I remember before this accident happened, when she changes lanes, she doesn't really like turn her head to look. And I think a lot of drivers just generally speaking, they don't turn their head to look. And I'm like, who did you learn how to drive from? Because when I was being taught how to drive, you were always checking your surroundings, no matter what, your eyes should always be forward, looking at your rear view mirror, periodically checking your side view mirrors, even if you're going straight. And when you're making a lane change, you signal, let it click about three times. And then you actually turn your head to look at the blind spot of your car. So you turn the signal on, wait for three clicks, look at the side view mirror. If there's no cars, then you check again by turning your head quickly to see there's no car in the blind spot. And then you switch lanes. But I realized that when Angelina was driving, she just kind of goes and then just goes. Like only her eyes move. I told her, I was like, girl, you got to like move your head. Even when you're making a right lane change, look out your your passenger side in the back and then make your lane changes. That did not happen when we got into this car accident. (laughs) Luckily, it was just like a fender bender. So, you know, I think there was actually more damage done to her car than the guy in the back. That happened maybe in December. In Korea, man, though, it's like if they think you're at fault and the collision is just literally like, they're like, my neck, my back, I had to go to the hospital, which is exactly what happened. There was a guy and his significant other like girlfriend or maybe a friend I don't know in the car and uh, apparently they told the insurance company we have pain we got to go to the hospital and I was like oh my god you guys are crazy but okay well you never know it did actually like jerk so who knows and so we found a hospital near our place because we had to go to the hospital too but I was like hey I have shoulder pain so let me just get a couple of like sessions in for my shoulder anyway because it, it was hurting because I was leaning on the armrest and I jerked like this and so I did kind of jerk my shoulder and my neck forward and I don't know if it was because of the accident or not but literally the left side of my neck was really actually hurting a lot. So I did get the treatment done a few times. And then after that, you know, it was a quick settlement because there's no point in dragging that out. But that was the last time that I actually got into a car accident when I was in the car. So the other stories that I have for cars are not accidents, but me randomly seeing my dad on the freeway of all places after he got in a car accident. This was me in 
I believe middle school. LA is huge. This story is to me, even when I think about it, it's still so bizarre how I was able to spot him and that we were there at that time for me able to see my dad. Me, my mom and my brother were in the car. We were driving 10 East to go home. It was around 4 p.m. And so that means there shouldn't be that much traffic on the 10 going east because it's not traffic hour. But there was so much traffic. And so mom was like, oh, like, oh maybe there's a car accident. And she was driving on lane one. I'm usually asleep in the car because whenever I'm in the car, I just have to go to sleep or else I start feeling sick. So I'm usually sleeping in the car. But that day, for some reason, I was wide awake and I was looking outside of the car and we're driving by slowly, slowly. Obviously the traffic happens because everyone's just like looking at the site, which is what causes the traffic. We were going, we were going and we were right next to it because we were on lane one and they were off to the side. And I look to the right and I see my dad standing there and I'm like, Oma, Appaya, it's dad, like pull over. And she was like, what are you talking about? Where? And I was like, in the car accident, it's dad. And she was like, are you sure? And so she pulled over and I get out of the car and I was running on the freeway towards the accident. And the police officer was like, you can't run over here. You can't run over here. And I was like, that's my dad. That's my dad. And he was like, what? And, and I was like, yeah, that's my dad. And so I run up to him and like, you know, he's kind of shaken up and I'm just like, Appa. And he was like, oh, oh, what? Like every, both of us were just like, you know, just so like dumbfounded. What is going on? Like, how are you here? And I was like, 지나가다가 봤는데, Appa야. We, like, we were driving by, but it was you. And so I got out of the car. The police officers and everyone was just kind of standing around. And like, you know, my dad doesn't speak English. And so I was talking to him in Korean. And this one police officer had the audacity to fucking be like, you got to speak in English. And I was like, What? My dad doesn't speak Korean. How the fuck do you want me to communicate? Like, I, I need to know what happened. And so I experienced a little fucking racism there. But from what I heard, they were driving on lane four or five and they were trying to swerve because a car had like all of a sudden just like switched into their lane. And as they were doing that, they collided and he hit the center divider and like spin three times and then landed on lane one. And thankfully they didn't hit any other cars because that would have been really bad. Like if he spun and like, it just kept going, the accident could have been really big, uh, but they didn't hit any other cars except for the one I think they were trying to avoid. It's still such a crazy story to me that I was in the back seat with my mom driving home. I think it was from after school and there was traffic and I look out the window, accident site, and that's my dad. Like, how does that happen? It's crazy. And I believe as soon as things were wrapped up, we were able to just take our dad home in our car. But if I hadn't, and we just drove by, how much longer would it have taken us to find out that, you know, our dad was in this really big accident, but thankfully he wasn't hurt, you know, things like that. So I was very thankful that I was able to see him when I did. Uh, enough with the accident stories. I think that's pretty much all of it. But now I have stories of when my car got broken into multiple times. And I still till this day cannot understand why it was my car. And this all happened when I was a student at UCLA. And I was doing off-campus housing on Gailey Street. And it's right across the street from behind Denev Plaza. So all you Bruins out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. For some reason, my boyfriend at the time and I had to drop my brother off at school. And my boyfriend at the time had gifted me for my birthday a Burberry wallet. And for another occasion, he had just gifted me this new digital camera. And both of it was inside my small fake Prada bag. <laughs> the contents inside were real, but the bag was fake. It's a fake Prada bag. And I have a habit of when I'm driving, I just throw my stuff into the back seat. Dropped him off. Bag is still in the back. You know, my boyfriend at the time sitting in the, in the passenger seat. We pull up into my gated garage. We pull up and I forget about this bag and we go upstairs. But again, it's a gated garage. I probably just wasn't thinking twice. 
thought it was safe. And then we go and take a nap. And I remember, oh, I want to go look at the camera because we had just gotten back from San Diego. We went to the San Diego Zoo and had taken all these photos. So I wanted to look at it and upload them onto my computer. I go down to my car. No other car is broken into but mine. And I was driving a forerunner. And so in the back seat, it's a square. And then there's like a triangular part of a window too. That part was bashed in and they stole <laughs> my bag. And I didn't care about anything else. I was just so sad that I lost all those photos, all those memories that we had just taken. I was kind of like, why just my car? <laughs> if you're going to fucking rob a car, then get something from other people too. Like, what the fuck, you know? And I remember just being so upset about it because, you know, the two things that my boyfriend at the time gotten for me too, the Burberry wallet and this new digital camera, that was gone too. And like, you know, I could have kept that forever if I wanted to, but you know, what can you do? So I quickly got over it. And then maybe about a year later, I moved south of Wilshire and it was a nicer apartment. Again, gated garage. <laughs> and I remember this time being like, put everything into the glove compartment, make sure nothing is showing inside of the car because I've been mobbed before. So I put everything in. And I remember we had just gotten like uh, a car charger for our phones and things like that, but it was all in the glove compartment. So we go downstairs to the car and my car is broken into again. And this time the whole front window is broken into. And I'm just like, why? Nothing, nothing was being shown. And so like, they like took everything out of the glove compartment and then like the car charger that we just bought was taken. But I was like, really though? Like there was nothing in the car. Like, why just my car? I was just really upset because again, no other car was broken into except for mine. And then you think that's the end, but no. My boyfriend at the time had also gifted me a cell phone. It was a Sony Ericsson, some model where if you turn it to the back, you could lift up a lever and it actually looked like a camera. It was that, that model. And um, I had a dog and two turtles at the time. And I had brought my dog and my two turtles to the vet at like 10 a.m. because there was something wrong with my turtle he had like a little lump and he needed to get shots and get checked up. And so I was like, at the same time, let me just go get, you know, my dog checked up as well. And, you know, I'm carrying like a turtle case with like two turtles with water and like, I'm trying to like handle my dog. And so I left my phone in the car and I forgot to lock my car, but it's 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. at the vet's office. I go inside, drop off the dog and drop off the turtles and I'm waiting and I'm like, oh shit, my phone's in the car. So I like go back to the parking lot and I press the unlock, but like it's already unlocked. So I'm like, fuck, I forgot to lock my car. But I'm like, ah, it's 10 a.m. It's fine. And I open the door and all the shit was like all messed up and I can't find my phone. And so someone robbed me at 10 a.m., I mean, I don't understand. Like at 10 a.m., these thieves, like they, I guess they don't care about morning or night. But I'm just like, really though? Like why is my luck with cars just this bad? I don't understand. So yeah, I remember having to go back into the vet's office, calling my boyfriend from the vet and being like, I'm so sorry, but someone just stole my phone. I think I was crying because it was literally like the third thing that he bought me that was stolen. And I'm like, this is starting to feel a little weird. Why only your things get stolen? Like, are you secretly stealing them? <laughs> I was so confused. When I think about those times again, I'm just like, there's no explanation. I just don't know. And there was another time where we were parked on a really wide street. It was like two lanes per way. It was really wide. I parked my car and I was staying with him at his place. And then we come back. I go to the driver's side and I try to open the window. I'm like, what the, f my side view mirror is gone. And I'm like, 
and it's on the fucking floor. Someone hit my car, knocked off my side view mirror and just drove away. <laughs> and I'm like, why me <laughs> again? And all these times, the windows being broken into twice, my side view mirror, I have to pay for it. Like, I don't know what to say about it because I don't think anyone has experienced this many car thievery experiences as much as I did. And all in like a span of a year or like a year and a half. It's fucking crazy. And I also remember after these fuckers stole my fake Prada bag with the real Burberry wallet inside, <laughs> they spent a shit ton of money at like Burger King or Carl's Jr. or something. Like, I guess they were really hungry. <laughs> and then they like filled up one or two cars because the the gas bill that they were charging it with came out to like 200 bucks. I was like, how many cars did you fucking fill up with my card? But yeah, those are, uh, those are my car stories. Those are all the bad memories that I have with cars. And so you can only imagine I have like trauma when it comes to cars. And so ever since I got hit by the car though, it's like, I just, I get really freaked out. Uh, it's better now, but for that first year, even up to a year and a half, even if a little something happened, I'd like really freak out, especially when I'm at a crosswalk, I could feel like my heart just starting to pound a little bit faster and I'm just a little bit more hesitant to step out um, and things like that. But I am doing a lot better. I am still healing, but I've healed a lot since then. Kapjagi stress <sighs> <laughs> like thinking about all these stories, I'm like, oh my God, so many bad memories that I have with cars. Um, but yeah, I am hoping that I don't have any more of those incidents with cars. If cars can just stop rolling over my feet and stop hitting me, that'd be great. <laughs> all right. Well, that actually took up a lot more time than I thought. Thank you for listening to all of my stories involving cars <laughs> and uh, leave in the comments other things that you want to know about me because every 10th episode, I'm always kind of like, what do I talk about? How do I entertain people alone for an hour? So yeah, suggestions are always welcome. I am planning to be a lot more active musically this year. So be on the lookout for that. I have some things in the works already, so I'm really excited. Thank you for being not so classy with Esna. Thank you for 30 episodes. <sighs> Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys in season four. Bye. <laughs> hey,